Alright, so I wasn't sure what I was going to uh, talk about. On the first one, this is just a, a good morning introductory recording, you know, because it's like the first one of the day. It's 10 30 already, so the day's already started. So, you know, it's already almost noon, and then um, I woke up. Like at eight, right at eight, uh, eight, woke up at eight, so, so that's it's just two and a half hours, right? It takes that long to set up to get ready to record real quick. But I guess we started off with the, with the story I did we were talking about yesterday. Because we came up with like another cadence and ended up figuring out that it's the cadence from Marvin's room, basically. It's, we found the Marvin's room cadence. Like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, break time. I just the first half of that is basically Marvin's room, bro. I just reversed it after, but bro, it's just uh, Marvin's room, bro. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, all right. All right. Let's all right. So later on, I'll, I'll, I'll do more like freestyles for, for that cadence practice in it, but, and I have to also write something in that cadence. And then I just wrote in the first cadence I made, and I thought I was going to write more in that cadence. And then now I have like two, three, four more cadences I can write to, so I might as well just do it like that and then go back and double up later, but just really do it like that. We have more cadences. I didn't think I, I would come up with more fast, but that first one was really just the basis, so all of them will be a variation of that one, basically, until I come up with, like, a whole another one, for real. But for right now, that's a new one. I can really, you know, derive a lot of variations from that. There are a lot of derivatives to be discovered from, from that. So instead of um, going straight into the freestyle, because that's what we want to do, right? But at the moment, once we press the point, it's like, yo, no, like we're not feeling it right now. So we're going to talk more about uh, the story we were talking about um, yesterday, Transhumania, bro. So how I start off a story, I start off the process of my process is to record on audio a lot of thoughts, maybe video as well, just a lot of like have conversations about the story and what I'm trying to do. Figure it out, flesh it out is is the backbone of the script. If there's no script, it's really just figuring out how we're gonna do this like all right, what angle are we taking? Who's the main character? Where's the backdrop? What's the city? What's the atmosphere? You know, and this this story is going to be crazy because it's going to be like, because they've already been making stuff similar, like everybody's superheroes kind of thing. And you start wondering, like, what are they trying to say? Like, this is genetic engineering, man, and genetic tampering. This is artificial intelligence being inserted into the human body. This is artificial intelligence working with the human body. This is biometrics working with the human body. This is biometrics inside of the human body. This is robotics inside of the human body. This is myoelectric prosthetics. That's more understandable because that's not really robotic, bionic. It's really just, it's, it's a mixture of robotic and maybe bionic. But it's not like just one of them. It's, um, it's that's specifically for someone that doesn't have limbs, so it's way more powerful. So that makes sense. But yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? You want to have the best artificial limbs possible, but the other, you know, robotics, the bionic stuff, and just I'll go through the list, I'll find the list again of industries that. I like to invest in, and we'll go through that as well, you know, but Transhumania, like, we're definitely going to have that aspect in there, we're definitely going to have the characters that are, um, 
investing and then I can put one of my ideas in there any ideas that fit in there I can put them in there so okay because that's that's how I have to do it I would have to put my old ideas inside of that one and that's how you combine the, the cinematic universes and make it just like the same cinematic universe or whatever but or two different ones that emerge so it's like okay you're gonna have the um I have an idea called Time Stairs. I have an idea called, called Time Stairs from about 2019. Time Stairs, Time Stairs. It's like people will go back in time, right? But they will go back in time to like one certain people who are like destined to be great in the future and to like invest their money in certain stuff. Like real talk, on some like angel investor kind of thing. And it was just going to be a real funny comedy movie. Super funny movie. Imagine a guy in the 60s telling him about the technology of the 90s and then it just cuts to him running from a whole mob about to get lynched. So it's just tiki white, tiki tiki whites and everything. Just tiki tiki blacks, all of them. Just tiki tiki Asians, all of them. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? But uh, it's like that. <laughs> Straight comedy of just like, you know what I'm saying? It's sent to the past to invest in stocks. And like, they put that in the, uh, the hot tub, of course. Like, that's a common thing. If I could go back in time, I would do it. But it's really like a whole story about it. It's just that. And it's like, it's an organization. The time series, they go in the past. I've been trying to figure out how to make that work. Like, is there another universe they're branching off in or something? You know, how is this simulation? How do I figure it out? How to really, like, what's the science behind it? But it's just like, fuck it. So things go back in the past. And, you know, um, there's stuff there, there ain't no coming back, like, you know what I'm saying, but I don't shoot, there's yeah, stuff there, and that's what it's for, there's stuff there, sending back and stuff there, and, uh, boom, you know, like, you know, it's like they're investing, and then, this aspect of, it's always like, you're from the future, so you know the important people in the future, so you so it's about one character that's in that present time, and how they're important in the future, so you're like with them and trying to get that. You know, so it's a buddy comedy on that level too. Like a double buddy comedy. You got the whole organization, and then you got the one person, like you know, a few people that you're sent to and stuff. And uh, I could do it like that because in the world of Transylvania, that was happening in that world of of this this cinematic universe of you know uh, genetically engineered humans. Basically, you just say it like that instead of saying it like this. Like, Super humans, just, they're really like you know, super genetically engineered humans, you know what I'm saying? Super genetically engineered humans, kind of story where that's just a product now, and everyone can buy it if they have the money, and then that means crypto is gonna play a huge part. Anybody who has crypto from this time in that time will be able to afford the genetic engineering. It's the social, the social peer pressure of the people around you having um, uh, DNA of a wolf and a tiger and a lion and a bear, like think about it, think about it, like okay, you got criminals out there, right, like it's like, alright, it starts off with like the right to bear arms, right, now with genetic engineering is basically going to be the right to have a bear's arm, real talk, like really stop to think about how to just switch that's crazy, right? So look, you got your criminals out there, right? And you have people that want to be safe from your criminals, and your criminals that want to be safe from other criminals, whether or not they're doing crime or not, right? So then you, you think about it, it's like, all right, you got your criminals that want to break in a house, right? But then they're like, all right, I'm going to break in this person's house. So then that person's like, yo, they want to break in my house, so I should get the DNA of a bear. And then it's, you know, because I got a lot of crypto, and they want to break in my house, because I got crypto. Because I got crypto. So I took the crypto money, and I, and I got the... A surgery for the genetic, the genetic engineering of bears, and all my kids are gonna come out like bears, and then that's kid having a kid and put the genetics of a wolf. Like real talk, like the real mark of the beast, though genetic engineering, the real mark of the beast, like getting the DNA of a beast inside of your body, getting the technology put inside of your body, like so many things like are they fit in the category of the mark of the beast. There are marks of the beast. There are marks, man. It's different ways. It's different things, man. So it's like once you put in technology inside of your body, you start to think like, you know, it's the mark of the beast because you really think it's like all this technology is like it doesn't necessarily just like come from God. A lot of stuff will come from like a demon. Like you would think about it. with a demon have possession of technology? You know what I'm saying? An alien definitely would. But maybe it's not an alien. It's a demon. So we know it, right? an alien would have 
possession of technology, but with a demon. Or maybe it's not technology, maybe it's magic. So it's like, what's technology? Maybe it's just reverse engineered from future species, species, right? Future humanoids or whatnot, right? Just future organisms out there, more advanced, man. Reverse engineered, everything, bro. Like, this is all just reverse engineered stuff from an advanced civilization. And maybe we're the advanced civilization from back in the day, and this is just like reverse engineered from something we found. You know, ain't no telling. Ain't no telling. Hey, look, it's out. Oh, it's out. And um, what else we got here? So we're talking about transhumanism. So in that world, it would be like, yeah, there are some people who like literally shit out crypto during this time because it's crazy. So boom, now you got the time streak coming back. Like it's just like terminated damn near because now he's like, you know, like. It's not like robots taking over the world. It's like, yo, I came back with more you to buy crypto because in the future, you're going to need it to buy the DNA of a bear because niggas out there are going to be tripping because everybody going to have DNA of wolves and lions and it's going to be beast wars, man. And that's that's how we'll do in the story. In the story, you know, the, you know, they'll participate in transhumanism. And, and, um, and then after be studying post-humanism at the same time and figure out that story and try to start writing that story in at the same time. In this first one, I'm doing transhumanism, write a little bit about transhumanism and that story, and then kind of skip over to another time frame of post-humanism. That way you can keep a steady flow of, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I feel like that will help a lot if you do it that way. You know, that way you can still have something in there about that time period. So that's all you really get to make, you know what I'm saying? Because like, you're playing a game with time and fate, how much time you have, like the fate of your time sheet. Like, I mean, that's really all that matters, not the circumstance of your death or anything, just really the time. It's how long did you have here and what were you sent down here to do? That's really all that matters. And you never know how long you were sent down here for it, and hopefully you'll figure out what you were sent down here to do. So once you figure out what you were sent down here to do, then it becomes, you know, you no longer ignorant of what you were sent down here to do. You figured it out, and now you're annoying it. So now you're just, like, held in contempt. You know what I'm saying? But if you figure it out and you spend the rest of your time, it's like, cool. That was your fate. To, to just see fate. Like, I see my destiny, I see faith, I, I can see these spiritual things, like, not really, like, I really see it, but I can see it, like, I know it's there, so I can look out and see, it could be right there, or it could be right there, or that one could be right there, faith could be right there, destiny could be right there, it's all right here, so, this is my faith. It's, it's not a bad one. The destiny wasn't bad. The fate wasn't bad. Because I chose my destiny. I had a great destiny. And I chose it. You know? And I would think everyone has a great destiny. Why would God not make a great destiny? God made a great destiny for you, bro. Don't. What's your problem? Like, there's a great destiny for everybody. You have to spend your life after pursuing it. With the issues I faced personally, it made it extremely easy for me to make that choice. So, if you have depression, trauma, addiction, you should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> but, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, I want you to. Um, to see your depression as, you know, it's like, um, without this depression, I wouldn't have this much art. Man, I just lost 5,000 gigabytes, so at least 3,000 of those 5,000. And I couldn't have made that much without the depression. And most of that was made before the depression even, before I really um, had to 
face it, and the memories were no longer repressed and came back. And that was at 27, so I had about three years. That's a long time. <laughs> I had three, you know what I'm saying? Like, I had a good glob of, of time to explore all of those thoughts and emotions for years on tape. And a lot of that is online because most of that period I was putting the audio back online. You know, sometimes I, I just get too caught up in the creation and I, it just stack up, man. It just become a problem. Like, yo, this is getting really big. What are we going to do with this? Years later, it's just insanely big. And it's like, yo, you're literally sitting on the career's worth of material right now. They got NFTs, you have 10,000 files. Like, you know what I'm saying? I potentially lost 10,000 files. Like, you know? Like, and it wasn't just like, like oh, you just lost it. Like, because it's something valuable that you, you're always going to have it on you. It's like one was left in New York. I literally just forgot to pack it. Like, it was in the bin in my room. You know, and I was like living in my living room because I had the whole basement apartment, so I would just sleep in the living room. I wouldn't just sleep in the room, and the whole rest of the place is empty. It was, I'd rather be in the majority of the space so I could see that, just you know, security and shit, just not be in the room and have the whole place to myself. Fucking like bed in the living room by the fireplace, you know, just couch right there, just chilling, bro. Straight bachelor pad, man. Fuck. Where's the bed? Right here. That <laughs> couch there. You know, shower there. It was just straight bachelor pad, just ready for a lot of, you know, sex. That's perfect, right? You got the couch there, bed there, shower there. It's just what? It's just the set's bad, baby. You know, it's just perfect setup. Perfect setup. No talk. But uh, transhumanism. I saw them up with depression, right? You know, um. So it's like the um one of my hard drives with two thousand gigabytes on it, I dropped it in New York. And I was walking outside and it was plugged up and it was small and it just like fell and so I was like, damn, so it wouldn't plug in after that, so I have to try to get a fist. If that works then I'm good I have that. Those are the years of twenty seventeen to twenty twenty. So I still had a little bit of space on it. Um, the other one just left in New York. So, and the person was mad I left, so he wouldn't save it. I told him to save it. That's the only thing that I'm throwing all these stuff away. So, tell me, but it's only one thing I want you to save. So, you know, it's like. You know, it was like that. It was like, this nigga doesn't want to save that shit. Then it's just over from there. So, so you know, like, you know, you wouldn't tell him that, but it's like, yeah, you know, like, there's only one thing I'm asking you to say. So, that would have been the footage from like, you know, 20 and 21, the very beginning footage. The reality show with Simon. I just, you know, um, You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like, I don't worship people, so I don't really want a lot of people around me anyway, because everybody has their own constitution. I don't fuck with people's constitutions, you know? Like, a lot of them are going to let their destiny down, or they just have a destiny of not getting the destiny, bro. That's just their destiny. I don't know how it works. You know what I'm saying? So maybe it's just their destiny and I get it this time around, bro. But I'm an old soul. I've been here many times before, bro. Like, I'm here for some wild shit. Like, I'm not here to just live comfortably for 80 years. Like, I would literally have a problem with being that I would consider that personally, I know to anyone else is gonna sound just incredibly insane, but it's like, I would consider that personally 
meaning I was a pussy for 80 years. 80 years on earth, and you couldn't fucking pick a cause to die for? 80 fucking years on earth, and you couldn't die for God not one year? You couldn't pick a just cause and just die for it? Go so hard, they just gotta kill you for it? You just couldn't? You just couldn't? 80 years, all you cared about was a comfortable life for you and your family, right? And then, and then, like, you know, a flood comes over the whole world, like COVID or something, and then you're asking for help from other people and God. Like, it's just like, you know what I'm saying? Like, all you want from life is to live as comfortably as you can. And you don't see a problem with that. That's, like, fucking slave shit. Like, all they wanted was to be as comfortable under that shit as possible, you know? But, like, if any of them was, like, really focused on how do we get free from this entire thing right now? Like, how can I help everybody get out of here kind of thing? That's the person that this law is just going to mess up and open up. Like, that's how it works, man. So that's why God has given me everything after watching me just walk through the storm, basically. I can't even say he put me through the storm. It is a storm. I chose to walk through it, and I did. And now it's just like this whole new person, and it's like, this is just the amount of abuse I had to take from the universe from my destiny, the destiny abused me, like it had certain things it had to do. So I was abused by destiny. You know what I'm saying? Like it was destiny for that to happen to me. And I couldn't imagine who I would be without that. It's always bothered me and it's kept my mind fairly serious. And still my heart is very light and at the same time, it's still heavy with a lot of pain, but I still maintain lightness in there and very lighthearted, just under heavy burdens. And um, God has given me everything that I wanted. And I just have to go through everything he puts me through. And that's it. It's like, oh, you want this? Fine. Go through this. I'm like, okay. I get it. It's like, I get it. It's like, you know, like you get what you want by going through what's necessary to prepare you for that. And then also like preparing for what you want at the same time yourself. And so it's this real simple equation. I want this. Well, you're going to have to go through this. I'm willing to go through whatever. So, boom. You know, it's like, he can hear what I'm saying, I can't hear what he's saying. So, he knows what I want. I don't know what I have to go through to get it, but I know I'm willing. So he's like, all right, it's unknown card, you flip this card. That was this, uh, well, we gotta flip this card. Uh, yeah. uh well, sure, sure, yeah, I'm sure. He doesn't know what's about to hit him. Here we go. Chad's like freaking out, oh, they're laughing. You know what I'm saying? The angels up there laughing at you, man, because you're just a sad, sad, sad person. And you just, you know, it's okay to be sad, you know, like, whoever said, you know, crying baby is bad, like, I can't deadpan for anything. Can't. But, I'm happy that the smiles flow so easily in that case, so, you know, it's to the best guy, right? It shouldn't be deadpan. I should be just laughing as much as I can. Right? So, um, um, what else, man? We're going to have to. I want to chop this up like a day to day. Like a. You know, like a day to day. Hold on. You know. I have to get like real pretty for the camera. Now I'm doing camera work again, but I just have to like never leave the house, but I don't go anywhere. 
you know, unless I get to work. So, um, I have to, you know, if I'm going to work, and I'm working, bro, like, fuck, you know, like, I need a barber to come to the house, I need a barber that lives in the neighborhood, you know what I'm saying, I just need someone that knows how to cut hair, like, what am I spending, like, $50 in a haircut for, bro, like, it's just gonna go back in a few weeks, bro, like, this is a lifetime thing, like, really think about it, like, these are lifetime expenses, and we just, like, society just raise the fucking price that we're willing to pay for these lifetime expenses, so now, we're literally just spending our life, like, buying that shit, that's all we do, all our life, it's just spend the money we make, you know, you're gonna make like a million dollars in your life, and you're not even gonna invest one dollar, real tight, so when you just say it like that, it takes away all the stress me, and being like, blah, 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 nah, I just tell you like that, you're gonna make a million dollars in your life, and you're gonna spend it all on the opposite sex, or all on, you know what I'm saying, like, it's worthy, it's cool, you know, kids, you know, that's cool, you know, hopefully you had kids with someone that, like, you know, stays with you, and then, you know, you, the kids can grow up with, like, both parents, and then, like, they don't have, like, a broken home, and they have more time to get into fucking bullshit, and then they fuck around and, like, get sexually traumatized and shit, you know what I'm saying, like, really think the shit through, man, so I'm trying to put this shit out here for you uh, motherfuckers, man, because it's like, bro, like, I don't blame my mom, I don't resent my mom, but being a single mom, how can I do that, right? You have to go with the father, the leader, the man of the fucking family. Like, bro, like, you treated him on mom the fucking life, left three kids, you already had a son before, so you don't let four kids. Like, you're such a fucking dickhead, man. And then my mom's a single mom now, so now the other brothers gotta go play in the streets for fucking money. And then we're not playing in the streets, you're playing with your fucking lives and your spirituality, your fucking spiritual soul, your mental health, your fucking psyche, your karma, your destiny, your fate. You're playing, you're playing around with your fucking life, like real shit, like, it's basically like, it's like, okay, 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 how about this, like, you niggas wonder, like, you street niggas, then, then that's all your niggas with destiny, how about that, like, you want to just settle it like that, then fuck it, right, you know what I'm saying, you want niggas to count you out, like, what the fuck, you know what I'm saying, you niggas vouch for some shit, but then you don't want to get counted out, all right, so you vouch for the shit, right, so you're just a fucking criminal, right, because you're just never gonna fucking stop doing crime, right, so you're just a fucking criminal, no, I'm more than, a, you know what I'm saying, like, criminals always want to have fucking feelings, and they don't care about anybody's fucking feelings, because they're willing to do anything for a fucking dollar, and it's just like, then you fucking die one day, and then it's like, you're being fucking judged, and it's like, why did you do all this fucking shit, and it's like, because I wanted to survive, like, damn, it's like, really stop and really think about that shit, like, I was willing to do so much fucked up shit to people, just so I could still be alive, right, boom, fast forward, now you got COVID-19, everybody's fucking dying and afraid to fucking die, nobody wants to fucking die, but everyone was willing to do whatever they had to do to survive, right, right, like, you were willing to do whatever you had to do just for you to keep breathing, who the fuck are you, and why are you that important, that you should be alive, why should you be alive, like, that's what COVID really opened up in thought for anyone, right, at least for me, nigga, it was like, I was never afraid of COVID, bro, I'm walking in my destiny, I can only die once, however, I'm meant to die, it was set up 34 years ago, I'm not 34 nigga, so it was set up before I was born, and it's already done, I'm watching this shit back in replay, this shit is already done, I'm sitting back in the showing room watching this shit to figure out why I fucking did what I did, right, I'm watching it back, I'm being judged right now, I think I'm in this movie, I'm being judged right now, I'm in a loop, they just put me in a fucking loop for some shit, I'm being judged right now. I've already done all this shit that's about to happen. I am watching this shit play out. That is how I am, right? I, I've i been thinking like that since, like, between the ages of 7 and 10. This, I'm already dead, and I'm watching it all in playback. I'm telling you, from 7 to 10, I'm that fucking nigga. You know what I'm saying? So, like, you know, like, real shit. I've been had that thought, like, damn, what if, like, already dead, and, right, like, I'm just watching this shit back, like, real shit, as a 17 year old, bro, it's like, that was, like, straight inspired thought from God to, like, put you on game real quick, where you're young enough to accept something like that, like, you're blessed to get a thought like that at 17, some people might get that thought when it's too late, and they can't even, you know, their brains are already too hard, and it's not even fully formed to 15. People under 15, you know what I'm saying, will already be gone. 
You know, it's like you really have to go before the age of seven. The first seven years of a child's life will imprint them forever. My first seven years, everything was smooth. So I guess that really imprinted me forever. So once like it went concrete in my head that everything was smooth, chaos, chaos forever. It just felt like for the next seven years, just chaos. Like so, so it, it like it made sense. God gave me a real smooth first seven years. Woo! And I stopped thinking about it. You know what I'm saying? And then right after that, that's when my art came. I didn't become an artist until after. So the first seven years of my life, it was just smooth, bro. And I was able to get the vibe of artists, I guess. By seven, she got rough, and I needed something to rely on. And I relied on artistry. And it went from there. And so, yeah, never really thought about that. So I have to be extremely grateful that I did. And that is why I don't have kids right now. I've always known, bro, since 18, that the first, my mom taught me that way before 18. My mom's a teacher. She studies the brain and stuff. So she always tells me about that stuff, like, the human brain doesn't get really formed until 15, until age 7, the human brain is a sponge, so that's why the kids copy everything they see, it's a straight sponge, bro, so, you know what I'm saying, the brain gets hardened and stuff, so, now you're, like, uh, um, taking the, uh, taking the uh, first seven years, I always said I wanted my kid to be, for the first seven years in his life, to be born on the island, to live on the island. You know what I'm saying? Like, in, in my head back then, I was saying, like, private island, like, really not a lot of people want it, but just an island, period. It's just an island, just a real island and stuff. But, <clears throat> but, but I wanted to be, like, secluded on the island and stuff, and, you know, get to be cool with, like, island people and just kind of have that vibe, like, be cool with island people type shit. Island people are cool. Be cool with island people. It's an island. Niggas chill. But other than that, uh, we man it. Right? So I wanted them to have this sense of calm and peace and not have other people's perceptions around them. So if I do like have a kid right before I die, I want the lady to um, move to a fucking island for seven years to keep that kid away from the majority of fucking people that want to be around that fucking kid. And you shouldn't want to be around that fucking kid. So keep that motherfucker away from everybody for the first seven years really first 18 years like you, you have to prepare this nigga for like 20 